Hey guys, we've got a 2012 Hilux here. It's in for its first inspection, first time we've seen it. 276,000 Ks, 2012 Hilux. So we're gonna go everything, over everything. Oh, have a look at that. Look at that kinked hose, see? We've got dramas already, so what's going on there? That's interesting. Uh, hose not fitted correctly by the looks of it. See, the drama started, sit tight. Anyway, we'll get back to the drama up the top. So, 2012 Hilux, 276,000 Ks. I'm just gonna go for a quick walk under we usually do. Quite often we use Prados in these inspections, but we're gonna go through all the usual things that we might find, this time on a Hilux, and show you a few things we're gonna check over a few minutes, okay? Just wanna quickly remind you, I only work school hours, so please avoid any contact outside of normal school hours, Melbourne time. You may be in another state, I'm in Melbourne. Those are the times I work. Now, let's have a look. We've got uh, OME suspension in there. It's bone dry. I don't know how long it's been in there. Uh, the other thing I wanna remind you about, if you do wanna purchase any of the parts kits we supply, the next day, it's Mondays. Mondays is the dedicated parts day so that we can do stuff like this. Guess what, today's Tuesday. We've got vehicles to work on so we can't get to the phone and organize those parts like we do on our dedicated Monday parts day. So the next Monday we're available is the 22nd. Monday, the 22nd of March. And it's gonna be one of the last for a while. We're taking April off. We had a COVID 2020, no holidays, lockdown, whatever. We're taking April off in and out a little bit on a couple of trips and there'll be some uh, trip information on our other channel for before touring Australia so on this vehicle uh, we're gonna basically go down and have a look at these the lower control arm bushes here uh, they look very good on this Hilux to be quite honest I can't see a split there on this side I can see a little split starting so very small amount I'll bring you under the vehicle shortly but um, just having a quick look now uh, it looks bloody good, I've got to tell you. So let's get you under there and show you this split in the bush and we'll see what happens, see what we can show you. As I said, under here, this one, I can't see any split there. It's hard for me to show you, obviously, with the light, but you'll have to take my word for it. I can't see a split on that one. Maybe just starting up the top there. I'll get in there nice and close, right? All right, certainly not very bad once you understand these bushes and the split in the open section see this one it's got that little split just starting up that side there so the best way to look after these bushes is look after them that's it have the right suspension don't have it bouncing around on old fog suspension and don't think that you've got a full drive and you can just go jumping over speed humps because you'll flog those out they're expensive they're hard to change aftermarket options are always not as good and the whole arms are expensive you know uh, we need weeks notice to get these because not many people buy them but the only way we do it is brand new lower control arms in pairs. They're about 1760 bucks for the pair delivered to your door. So yeah, that's it. Surprise, surprise. Look after the bushes. I don't want to sell you arms. If you need arms, it's going to be cheaper than you can get them elsewhere probably. So hit me up Mondays, just having a look around. So the engine, fairly bone dry. Look at that, I'll get the light up there and we'll talk about what is that bit of oil there. That's not an oil leak, it's just the wheat. We're not worried about that. Um, that is most likely not much coming from this side. It's not the vein pump, it's not the vacuum pump. Those O-rings look good. It's not the sump. It's not gonna be the cam seal. It's not coming from underneath that crankshaft there. The crank seal, I meant to say. One of those ones where I go, wrong words. Maybe something from this side. Perhaps the O-ring on the, that's why I said, uh, anyway. See right in the middle of the picture there, you've got your crank seal. There's an O-ring on that. You can't buy genuine separately. You gotta buy the whole sensor. It's about 200 bucks, so. But I don't think it's that either, and it's certainly not worth fixing it. 276,000 Ks, virtually bone dry, which is good. Now, let's have a look at the rack boot. You know, on the Pratos, we regularly see that bit of a sweat, and guess what? No surprise. You're not going to see any different on many motor vehicles, other than if it's not a Toyota, you'll probably see a lot worse. Look at this one. 276 K, hardly even a sweat on it. But you're going to see this on vehicles and on other makes and models. This is where, I've got to be quite honest here, I don't have shares in Toyota, so I don't give a stuff what you buy. I know what I think's best from my experience, and it's best from the engineering perspective. It's not because it's got the most bling or something like that. It's reliability, strength, design, and from what we've seen. People that sort of like other brands without naming things like Kia's and Hyundai's, okay, they're not as good as Toyota's, and they probably never will be. Now, cars are a lot better than they used to be, so... 
you know, it's good enough. But these are the sorts of vehicles, once you see them at 150, 200, you're probably going to see more leaks. But I should, what should I say? What do I know? I only look at these cars now because I looked at those cars for a couple of decades, all makes and models. And I decided I just want to work on the good cars. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything here yet. I've just had a quick look at the rear brakes. And I've got to show you that. So the easiest way to check the rear brakes is you get this little inside the rear drum on a highlight. See, that's where your handbrake cable goes in. There's a little blanking plug there, right? Let me just put this other light down for a minute. And I'll try and explain again. I did in another video. I'm trying to hold it still at close range. Sorry about that. But basically what you're looking at there is right in the middle of the picture, that's the metal part of the brake through the backing plate. And I'm going to move the drum back and forward so you can see just how little meat there is left. These brakes are really low, right? You can't, it won't focus. So I'll just come back a bit, right? So you can see the drum. You can virtually see nothing. Now this vehicle, again, serviced by a Toyota dealer, and I'm not gonna name it, but it's not Bendigo Toyota this time, it's on the way to Bendigo. And I'm pretty sure that was the dealer, but I haven't got my facts in line, so I'm not gonna say it yet. I'm not gonna say it was Kyneton Toyota that quoted four grand to uh, replace a steering rack because they gotta pull the engine out, right? <laughs> So expensive but cheap. Um, I'm not going to say it was them because I'm not 100% sure. But this vehicle has been serviced by Toyota dealers. And I don't know if that's going to make the next service. That looks dodgy. Let's check the other side. I certainly wouldn't, you know, this side's got more. Okay, again, I'll put that other light down. It's just tying up my other hand. Right, now look, this is the way you do it. We'll try and get this still. Right, so you can hardly see any meat there, right? Right, that one, it's got, I'll tell you, right, I can judge it here best. It's got about a millimetre at best, and that'll probably make it, these, these rear shoes, they do last a very long time, okay? They last a long time. So that's what's happening there, but are they even checking them, you know? I've looked around underneath this vehicle so far, other than the usual bit of dirt and whatever, obviously it gets used, it gets driven, right? So it gets dirty. It's always best to clean it up for inspection so then we can see what's going on. So, you know, if you're thinking about bringing it in for inspection, give it a good clean up a week or two before. Try and keep it clean. And uh, we can see part, see what's a leak rather than just see what's a lump of mud with some water around it, if you know what I mean. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying it's hard to see. But I don't see any oil leaks, deterioration. Uh, diff plug there looks all right. That one's full of dirt, so it gets in the mud sometimes. It's got some airbags being added in there to help support the weight, whatever. Again, you can see the ARB Nitro Charger. This stuff is made by Monroe in Australia, in South Australia, okay? I like it. I'm not saying it's the most comfortable ride. That's what I'm gonna say the negative on some vehicles on the track. So let me get this in perspective. When I road test Prados and I go, geez, that drives nice on the road, I look underneath and guess what's under there? This gear. But then when we're out on the tracks and I go, whoa, that's a harsh ride. And we'll have a look what's under there. That's ARB Nitro Charger and, you know, the King Springs. So, yeah, uh, it's a bit of a butter bing. Anyway, uh, what else? What else? Um, okay, that, that grease, this time it's grease. It's not oil. Okay, so with that, I just want to be clear, you know, some people, they just think we come down in the last year. We come up with some cheap solutions sometimes to help people out. Now, we understand this is a transfer case, and that's the gearbox over there, and in between where it's bolted together. A lot of people don't understand this. That's like an airspace, okay? There's a seal in there that could be leaking. Not on this vehicle. And by putting the RTV, it's just hiding the problem, but it's not going to cause any problem. Absolutely not going to cause any problem. Nobody's looking underneath there that it's going to look any more untidy than that mess that's there now anyway. So who gives us stuff, right? For people that want to tidy up that oil so they know it's, you know, not something worse, it's just that smear along the bottom. It's more of a demonstration how well that RTV works. But anyway, whatever, you can carry on all you like. But in this case, grease flicking off that, uh, so you, you lube this uni joint, right? And then you can see there's a little bit up that side. Right, you can see it's around there, it's around the bottom because gravity, and then you know it just spreads in the joint a little bit. So in this case, so sometimes when you've got that, you just need to clean it up because it could be the grease off the tail shaft, it could be the seal, it's a bit like I said, it's not worth the hundreds of dollars pulling transfer cases out to change a seal for five mil of oil a year, which is why you can just leave it, you can wash it. If you just want to tidy it up so you feel better, you can do that little RTV smear thing on the joint there. That's what that's all about. 
Um, same thing over here because you've got your front uni joint. But I'm looking around this vehicle while I'm telling you about it. And look at the drive shaft boots. Look at this, nearly 300,000 Ks. This one, not even a sweat, right? Those um, tie rod ends are good. Upper ball joints are good. Lower ball joints are good. I've had a bit of a feel around, look, checking for play. There's nothing in this front suspension, any of these rubbers, that I would worry about replacing at this point in time. Again, the OME in the front. I haven't driven this one yet. If I remember later in the video, I'll uh, take it for a drive. I'll let you know what the comfort's like. See that bit of oil there? Yeah, maybe at some point, you know, look, it could have been replaced and someone's put a bit of grease there and the grease is cut. Again, that grease thing. Or it could be it had a tiny little leak at some... Again, not worth fixing, right? Until you see oil coming out there like real, you know, in my opinion, not worth fixing that. I wouldn't... I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to tell you you need stuff you don't need. Let's have a look at that turbo. Look at it. 276,000 Ks bone dry. I suppose what we need to talk about in the injectors because at the end of the day, they've done a lot of Ks if they haven't been changed. So let's have a look if they've been changed. Well, the last thing I wanted to tell you about under here, there's the tiniest amount of movement in this inner rack end inside that boot there. I'll see if you can hear it. No, you can't. Like, I can, ha that, that, not even worth talking about. I'm like, this is on the really fussy side, just to tell you, it started, there's a little bit of play. It could stay the same for years. It could get slightly, it's not gonna go anywhere in a hurry, but just mentioning there's the slightest bit of, I haven't measured it, 0.01 of a millimeter of movement. So the good news is, it hasn't been butchered from what I can see, you know? It was some really bad news at the start with this hose, which I'm about to fix up. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, here we go. And we haven't fully checked under the bonnet yet. We're about to do that and um you know but it's good news looking underneath and over the whole vehicle everything i can see it generally hasn't been worked on which is good news because often people do butcher things and make them worse than what they were before but looking around everything here i mean this is the good thing about the later vehicles this is pro it's a 2012 so it probably got full dlc injectors which is why it's gone this long it's done highway k's which is why the seats probably might not be leaking it 276,000 k's that's a long time i said probably we don't know yet um, looking at the fuel pipes have they been off i can see some marks on those nuts there so they may have been off but it's too hard to you know what i mean i can't really call it you know i'm just looking at those marks on the there's not much else we can see till we start pulling it apart but looking underneath the the clamp under there it's in position it's not over tight and things like that is how we tell if someone's been in there the fact that it seems to be running okay but we still there'll be a separate video on the diagnostic and the smoke test and all that so subscribe turn the bell on we're not done here yet let's fix up this hose what are we going to do quite simple i'm going to get the pliers i'm going to squeeze this clamp here and while i'm squeezing that i'm going to slide the hose up to the end of the radiator and so it's 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 shocking at both ends have a look i don't know why they've had that off and oh they must have had done the water pump hmm maybe they've had something off they've done something down there because they pulled the hose off for that reason you can see it's about i'll tell you the measurement it's about five mil off at that end and it's about three or four mil off at that end so i'm just going to quickly adjust that and i'll show you what it looks like afterwards so this is literally two minutes later that includes washing my hands i think so all i did like i said squeeze the clamp it's important to try and put the clamp back in the same spot it was or make sure it's in the right spot right all the original genuine marks i mean Look, to be quite honest, the hose, it's a bit twisted. The whole thing's off a little bit, but it's not a big deal. Okay, it's okay. Uh, it obviously wasn't causing too much of a problem before, and because it was kinked, it takes a bit of that sort of shape, you know? So now the movement and the heat and everything, that'll sort of remold it back to the position it's meant to be in. So you can see, butted up all the way to the plastic. Well, it is all the way, isn't it? Let's have a close look there. Yeah, it's all the way. I was questioning myself for a minute there. Okay, and up there, see? Butted up to the alloy there. Clamp. Well, it's not 100% the same position. It's a couple of mil out. So let's uh, leave it like that to see what happens. The key is that the clamp is in a good position, just on the edge of the ridge. Now, what do I mean by the ridge? There's a little ridge just on the inside of the clamp there on the end of the radiator, and same thing on the end of the alloy there. The clamp needs to be just behind that, just nicely. You know, all the genuine hoses, they've got these white marks on them to tell you where the clamp needs to be. See that white mark? Why do you think it's there? It's where the clamp goes. Same with that one. So they're a little bit off, but I sort of like to put it back where it was, even though I haven't done that this time. 
the reason I stopped messing around with it, I was losing a little bit of coolant. You can see the coolant leaking down there. It's not a, I let the pressure out first, so here's a quick tip. You know, take the cap off, let the pressure out, put the cap back on so then it doesn't leak out fast because the air needs to go in for coolant to go out, right? One end at a time, I did this end, a few drips, big deal, beautiful. That end, I fluffed around for 20 seconds and I went, you know what? 98%, 99%, good enough. That's not going in here, I guarantee it. We only lost probably 20 mil of coolant in total, so I'm not worried about bleeding or topping up the cooling system. It's still a little bit above the full line. We certainly lost less than that. So we'll continue. Look, I like to clean up things like, you need to get these leaves out, guys. You need to grab those bits of leaves. That don't park under the trees or once a week or whenever you see them there. Just grab them out because they're going to rot away and rust away the vehicle, block things up and cause problems. Um, again, looking at the injector side of things, you can see that sweat of oil there. I don't believe that would be like that if it had never been off, but then I could be wrong. Uh, could be the gasket starting to go hard. It's one of those ones that's going to be hard to tell until if when we get in there to do the injector job. Let's take a look across the top. What do we see there? Right, it looks pretty good there. Turbo, we already said that looks good. Um, Everything I can see doesn't look like it's been in a bingle. Coolant level's good. I had a good look around the radiator and that. Because my first thought when I saw that hose squash, I thought, oh, it's been in a bingle. And I was looking for the radiator support panel here bent in or something. And it wasn't the case. And quickly spotted that uh, hose had been removed. Power steering oil level's good. Um, battery's secure. Electrical. I can't see any major catastrophes. It's not ideal. But you know, we normally see all these red wires everywhere and we're going, oh, no. Look, at least we've got, you know, rubbing on the power stringer a bit, but at least we've got corrugated split tubing. Everything seems to be covered up and secure. The fuse is sort of hanging out there a little bit. We could tidy that up a bit. That's not what it's here for. It's here for an inspection. So my conclusion to this vehicle is needs a bit of a clean-up. We better talk about the injectors now. I don't want to talk about injectors too much because this is a vehicle inspection video to give you an idea of the things we look for, the things we find and how bloody good these Toyotas are. 276, it's 270 something anyway. I think it was 276,000 Ks. It's nine years old. It's just had standard service, which means it's been rushed in and out of dealerships for a quick oil change and a quick look over and try and sell you some stuff, which the only thing they're gonna have any luck with that is generally brake pads and tires, because that's generally as far as they look, if you know what I mean. Uh, doesn't seem to be, they're saying, look, you know, injectors, prevention, all that sort of thing. So. As I said at the start of the video, Mondays is the day parts day we can supply you the injector kit. This has come up to 300,000. So soon it's going to be the BFE. We convert over from this silly one-piece water pump to a two-piece pump so that big job doesn't need to be done again. Changing all the belts and bearings. All these kits, Mondays, parts days, guys. But you need to be aware because we do take holidays. And this is what I've been saying. Your last opportunity next Monday, the 22nd of March, to get parts. That's your main day. Please save it till then. And remember to get to me then first thing in the morning, 8 a.m. Melbourne time, and we'll get those kits pumped out that week for you. Um, if you're late and you miss this video, there's a chance, there's a chance I can help you out on the 29th of March. Okay? You know, we'll be around, it all just depends. I've got plans, right? I've got plans. I'm trying to let I'm trying to help you, help me, help you. So that you don't because people some people get impatient and they go and get stuff elsewhere and they regret it. I can tell you I deal with it all the time. People sending things back, making mistakes. So please plan ahead. I'm trying to help you with this information. Um, injectors on this, kind of long overdue, but I'm not worried about it. And I've already said, kind of touched on why. Before 2012, in the engine is not full DLC injectors. So your nines, tens, and elevens, you need to change them. We're going well overdue. You know, I'd be just change them at those sorts of Ks. You're well overdue, plus the seats. In 13 onwards, in engines, are full DLC injectors. If you want to know what that means, you need to go and watch our playlist, Injector Information. There's heaps of videos in there explaining it over and over again. I had someone text me today, oh, what do you mean full DLC? You need to watch the video, guys. I can't individually answer all the questions on the mobile. If you've got questions, search our pages, search our channel, search our YouTube channel, look at our playlists, watch the videos. There's all your questions are answered. I think that pretty well covers it. Injectors, it's not urgent, 
but it kind of is needs to be done ASAP because the seats could start leaking any time. You've seen our recent video on that 120 2007 that's um, it needs an engine now. That's what you risk if you get it. This could have blow by and we don't know. It could have a blocked oil pickup and we don't know. It's not part of this service now because we're not doing an oil change to check that. I don't think it has. When we start it up, I'm going to be looking for smoke because if you watch those videos, you'll understand why. So we're going to do enough checks here to hopefully get it by for a amount of weeks or months till it can come back and get that injector job done, get the EGR cleaned out and those few other related bits and pieces. Guys, I hope that helps both the owner and you understand what we're looking at in the maintenance on these vehicles. If you like that, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe, turn the bell on if you haven't already and share the channel to your friends if you want to help them. The best genuine vehicle information you'll find on the internet and don't take my word for it, it's the comments. I'm just telling you what all the comments have told me. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.